take all of them and then you don't use them and then you share them. Well, hi there. Welcome back for another art project. Um, today we're going to be talking about forms and three dimensional shapes. So today we're going to draw cylinders. So this is an example of a cylinder. This, I think it's a like a wrapping, like a wrapping paper tube. Um, this is another example of a cylinder. And this could be a cylinder. It's a very flat cylinder. This is an example of a cylinder with a couple different cylinders on it. But what I want you to notice when I'm looking at these cylinders is I see flat, straight edges on either side. I see a curve that connects those straight edges on the top and on the bottom. And depending at what angle I'm looking at it, I'm going to see the other side of this curve. So it's almost like an oval shape. Okay, so we're looking at different cylinders today. We're going to start with a very simple cylinder, something that's very straight on each edge. It has the one curve on the bottom and the one curve on top that can kind of continue along. Okay, so what you're going to need for today's um, art project. You could really just get away with a white sheet of paper and a pencil. If you want to add color to that white sheet, we're going to use crayons or markers or whatever you have to add color. Um, if you want to take it a step further and you want to do some shading and show some reflections, you might want to work on a black sheet of paper. Um, if you're going to do that, you're going to want some type of chalk to work on or to, to work with. We're going to use chalk pastels, but anything like sidewalk chalk would work um, for you as well. Um, so I, I had other forms here, I think probably in your classes. You've also talked about rectangular prisms. So this would be our rectangular prism. Some of you may also have learned about cubes. So a cube has our square sides. Okay, a dice, a die or dice would, have, would be a cube as well. So we see the square sides. Another rectangular prism could be a book. We see the different edges, different rectangle edges that we see there. Um, another form is a sphere. So any ball shape, a sphere. Um, I know we're, I'm pulling things out of my daughter's playroom. And then another form would be a cone shape. I couldn't find, we don't have ice cream cones here, but another cone shape. Um, this is kind of a combination of a rectangular prism down here at the bottom. Then I have a cone, nope, a cylinder shape here in the middle with a cone on the top. So a lot of our forms around our house do combine different three-dimensional shapes. Today we're going to focus really closely on the cylinder. So let's get started with our white paper and a pencil. So if you're going to add flowers in your vase, you're going to want to start, do you want to pass me another sheet of paper? And I can, my daughters are doing this with us. They don't, didn't want to be on the video, but I'm going to do it in two places. So you're going to start near the bottom of your paper and you're going to do two straight lines. You could use a ruler for this. We're going to just freehand it, but some sort of straight edge would help you. But towards the bottom, you're going to do two parallel straight lines. And if you didn't do it towards the bottom, that's okay. But you do want them to end and start in about the same spot. Okay. And remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Remember, you can always flip over your paper if you're not happy with what you started with. Once you have those two straight parallel lines, you're going to connect those with a curve. And mine is a smile curve here along the bottom. So it stretches across from one side to the other to create the bottom of our cylinder, okay? If I look at my soup can cylinder, you will hopefully see the same thing. So I have these two straight edges here 
and they're connected by that curve. If you look at the bottom curve and the top curve, you should notice that they are the same curve. So they too follow the same, same curve. They're parallel. They would never touch. So I'm going to do the same parallel curve there. So again, it's a smile curve. Okay. All right, I'm going to show you this can again. So if I'm holding up this can, I see my curve along the bottom, the curve along the top. And then what happens to this top curve? It curves in the opposite direction. So when you go to draw that, this time it's going to go the opposite way. It is our rainbow curve. <clears throat> Okay, so you see that. Now, my vase is going to be see-through. And since my vase is see-through, you might see a very faint, a very faint curve along the bottom here that echoes the same opposite curve as it does up here on the top. So if my vase is see-through, I'm gonna do a very faint line along the bottom. Okay, because there is light all over, unless you're working in a pitch black room, because there's light all over, you might also see reflections of these lines. It's not going to look a lot like a reflection here on the white paper, but when we do it on um, when we do it on the black paper or a darker paper, you may also see other reflection lines. Okay. So now's the time to grab a crayon. I'm, I suggest working with the stems first. So I'm going to grab a greenish crayon. Um, I am sharing here, so I'm going to have all different sorts of greens here. Um, when you go to think about your flowers, I'm going to think about how to spread them out so I have enough room to put the flowers on top of the stems. So if I think about my stem, it goes in front of, it's going to go in front of this back line, but it's since it's inside the vase, it's not going to go over that front curve that I have there. So think about where you want your flowers to go and what parts of the vase it will all actually cover up. I want to make sure I have enough room for the flowers to make them beautiful and, and big. Um, so I'm going to spread out my, my stems so that there's room to put different shapes of flowers. Okay, You're welcome to add leaves to these stems if you would like to. But the thing to keep in mind is that it goes in front of this back curve and then it goes behind this front lip of my vase, okay? So that's how my flowers might look, okay? And you can decide which way you want your flower stems to point. They can all be pointing in the same direction. You're welcome to add leaves to these stems if you want to. Um, you don't have to. You can make your flowers look however you would like them to look. And then from there, that's where you get to be creative. You get to add whatever type of flower you want to on top of these, on top of these stems. So whatever you would like to add, I'm just working with some crayons here. You can work with different color, different color combinations, add your leaves in different ways. Um, if you're some of my older students, we've talked about some different shadings and values that you can add to your flower petals. Um, it would be great to mix the colors, even if you're just using crayons. Even if you're just using crayons, you can mix different shades of colors to, um, to combine them in interesting ways. So I'm going to just go and and add some different colors to my petals here. You can add different textures. Once they're, 
Once the color is down, you can go in and add different textures to your flowers. If you want your vase to be a color, you can go over top of those cylinder lines with crayon. If you want to make it look like there's water in your vase, you can add that color at this point. Okay. Um, again, it's hard to add the the reflection lines or the, the highlights on the white paper. Um, so it doesn't look like our vase is floating. You can add your table lines on either side and all of this can be colored in to make it look like my vase is sitting on a table, okay? Um, because my vase is see-through, you might actually see some of that color through the vase. All right. Yep, you could put your water there too. So my daughter just reminded me, you said that was water, mom. Well, you can add your water down there. But if you really think about water, it's generally clear. So I don't know if you, you can add it blue if you want it to look like that. That's up to you. Okay. While you're working, while my daughters are working on those, I'm going to show you some different cylinders that you can do. Remember, there are all different vase shapes and bottle shapes, jar shapes that you can do. Um, let's see, I should have maybe grabbed a Sharpie, but I'll just use a black crayon. Okay, I'm going to show you some different vase shapes that you can work with today if you're working on this project. So we started with a very simple cylinder like this. Okay, you can make that a little bit more exciting by creating another cylinder that attaches to that. So if I add the upper part to my vase, I can add another lip here. I'm always seeing these curved lines and I'm seeing these parallel vertical lines as well. Okay, when I get to the very top, I can close it off. Okay, I can also add the, the lines that you might see kind of like a reflection. I should have curved this line a little bit, which I didn't, but that's okay. Okay, so there's a different type of, of vase shape. You can do a curved cylinder. So if I start with a curved line on top and I echo the curve down here at the bottom and I connect those two smile lines with a curve, there is a different vase shape that you can do. I'll add that lip at the top there if it's see-through transparent, you'll see some of those lines. You can add the, the reflection lines if you want to on either side. Um, again, you'll be able to see that more on the black paper. Um, let's see, a different vase shape. I can do like a mason jar shape. Start with almost like a hockey puck here at the top. I connect those two straight lines with my curve. They have the threads to screw the top on there so I could add some of those. And the opposite curve for the top. My mason jar would just curve a little bit on the sides and then go straight down, straight down and connect it with a curve. And that, oops, I ran out of paper there. Um, that would be more of a mason jar look, but any of those can be vase shapes. Um, those are all different types of cylinders, all different shapes. Um, I'm sure you can think of other ones like soda cans or soda bottles um, or different vases you may have in, in your house. Okay, so practice doing some different cylinders. Um, and then if you want to keep going with us, I'm going to just show you some different things you can do on the black paper with chalk. You can um, do this with a, a white oil pastel. You can do this with um, a white crayon um, on top of black paper or a, a darker blue or purple paper. Any of those would work. Okay. Um, I would say always start with your vase first. So I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna just do a pretty simple vase shape, okay? 
Oh, and you know what? I told you to start with your straight lines. I'm starting with my curve. Okay. I know that I want mine to be a little bit of a rounded cylinder, a rounded vase shape. So I have my two smile curves on the top and the bottom, and I'm going to connect those with the curve that I want my vase to be. Okay. I'm still, still mastering this working upside down thing. I know there's different ways to make videos, but I haven't figured it out yet. The nice thing about chalk is if you do make a mistake, you can erase little mistakes if you want to, but don't, don't spend too much time on fixing things up because we kind of want to go with whatever is on your paper. So once you have that, um, you can go and you can add that back curve there. Okay, I'm going to do a very light line here at the bottom for my see-through. Okay, um, I'm going to then go ahead and add some reflection lines or some highlights, some where the light would hit my vase. Okay, you can do that along with a black piece of paper. Sure, didn't I give you one? No. Mirabella, could you get her a black sheet? Thank you. So once I have my vase there, I'm going to actually just go and I'm going to soften up these lines with my finger just so they're a little more solid but they're a little foggy as well, especially these highlight reflection lines that you might see where the light hits my vase, okay? Um, so I'm going and I'm just smoothing out these lines. And remember, if, if I have any major mistakes, I can go back and fix that um, when I'm all done. If I really wanna go and erase any of these things, I can do that. But once I have a decent vase shape, Again, I'm going to think about where I want my my flowers. I'm going to just I'm going to just show you one of these. So actually, I should have started out here. So I know I want a flower here. I'm going in front of this back white line, and then remember, my stem is inside the vase, so I don't want to go over this front lip. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that stem down. Now, the nice thing about chalk is that I can overlap these colors. I can add some highlights. I can add some shadows. Um, I can go in there with my finger and I can blend that a little bit if I want to. If you see the dust coming off, that's the pigment. That's the color of the, the chalk. We ask you not to blow it. Um, we don't want to create dust all over we don't want to create dust all over our house. Okay, we'll do one more stem here. Um, so my stem is inside my vase, inside my vase. I don't want to go over that front lip, but I am going to go over the back lip. You can add that other color if you want to, just to give it some more um, depth, some more interest there. You want the colors in the middle? Sure. Okay. So again, if, if, you're, if you end up with, with dust on your paper, just tap it off. We can clean the counter off or the table off later. Okay. Um, I love, 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 love daffodils. So I'm going to just quickly show you how to do a daffodil. I'm going to start with, I don't know, I call it the trumpet part first. So it's, this, it's the shape that kind of points to the side. And it's kind of like a sideways cylinder. Okay. And it usually has a little bit of a, instead of a perfectly rounded edge, it has kind of a bumpy edge there, if you can see that. Okay. And then from there, you're going to see your, see your petals. So my petals are in front of my stem. I love daffodils. It makes me think, I wish I could go. I wonder if any of the grocery stores are carrying daffodils right now. I know they have tulips. I haven't been out to the grocery store, though. My husband's been going out and getting our groceries um, for us so that we all are staying safe. And he's just picking them up for us. And I'm going to go. I'm going to fill in those, the daffodil petals. But I'm going to want some other colors in there so it doesn't all look like one Oh, you have a messy hand over there. So you don't have one ye whole yellow blob there. <clears throat> so I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in with some yellow orange and add some other textures there. Okay. 
I do love my chalk. I love to blend it. It's so messy, but I do love using it. I think I made the trumpet part of my daffodil a little bit too small. It should probably go right off the paper, but we're going to just stick with it. It's a little bit of a weird angle. One of these days I'm going to figure out how to do a video um, the right way <laughs> so somebody can videotape over my shoulder. I'm going to add some white, like a highlight here. So that you can see that a little better. Okay. Anyway, so there's a daffodil kind of shape. I'm not loving this, this one here, but we're going with our happy accidents today. I'm gonna just go with it. Um, and you can always go back in with more colors, adding more textures and designs, okay? or details in your petals. Um, one thing you definitely want, you do want a table back there. So you want a table for your vase to sit on. Remember, you might see it through your vase. Okay, so I'm adding my table. If you want to take it a step further, you can give your vase a shadow. Um, so if you take a black, remember the shadow has to touch the object, unless your object is floating or jumping or flying, um, the object will always go right up to the edge. The shadow will always go right up to the edge of your object. Okay, one shadow. Oh, look at yours. And, oh, because you did a black table. Okay, that's fine. You don't need to do one. Um, anyway, um, if you want to add your water inside your vase, you can certainly do that. You're going to notice that I'm going over some of my white lines, so I am going to need to touch those up. Um, you can add some water in there if you want water. And then again, if, you, if you're losing some of your lines from the details that you've been adding, you can always go back over your vase lines at this point. I went over some of them. And you can easily add them back in there. Okay, just blend them together. And I think you'll end up with a really beautiful project. So when you're all done, I think I, I didn't add any leaves on mine, but when you're all done, you should have a beautiful vase sitting on a table. Add whatever kind of flowers you want to, tulips, daisies, roses, whatever makes you happy. Um, but go ahead and practice doing your cylinders first. I would practice just on a piece of scrap paper, computer paper. Um, and then if you do have these extras at home, like chalks or darker papers, you can go ahead and use those and just have fun with it. And I'd love to see any of your finished work or any of your finished projects, um, either when we come back to school or if you send them to me, that would be awesome. All right, everybody, that's a wrap for today. Have a wonderful Monday and I will see you soon. Bye, everybody. Yeah.